accident happened around 5 a.m. A silver sedan was heading south, ran into the back of a motorcycle who was sitting at a red light, and the driver of that sedan said he simply fell asleep. Oh, wait, cross street. This is where LeVar Scott took his last steps, shot in the neck by an unknown gunman. Video from our crew there. Officials tell us residents at this complex were evacuated due to a fear of a natural gas leak, possibly underground. I was going to talk to the chief Darwin right out for a live interview. He had to go and get a hose and extinguish those flames and the smoke was very thick. So daylight will help us to see the scene a little bit better now. Like I said, it's about eight hours old, but you can still see smoldering in multiple spots. Almost 30 years of existence gone in minutes. The South Hopkins Volunteer Fire Department could only watch as more than a million dollars of damage burned to the ground. When one hurts, they all hurt, you know, because it's a big loss. And, but uh, with everybody's help, we're, we'll, make, we'll make it. In 1985, Chief Darwin Rideout's father, Paul, helped build this station. Because back then, nearby stations in places like Morton's Gap and Nortonville didn't leave the city limits. So that left roughly 40 square miles uncovered. My dad was, he was the chairman of the board for this department for 26 years. And everybody knew him as Big Daddy. And they said, we want that put on the truck. Now here's what's left of Big Daddy's engine. Usually fire trucks aren't named after people while they're still alive. But the firefighters in this community loved Big Daddy and adored him so much. They wanted to make sure he saw this before he passed away. It, it was named Big Daddy and on there, and it, it, he got to see it all before he passed away. So it's uh, it's bittersweet, you know, to, to lose that. Big Daddy and so much of his hard work is now rubble. But right out in his family of firefighters say they never struggle or suffer alone. It's a brotherhood. It's uh, you're in it. You're not in it for the glory or anything. You're in it to help your fellow man, and we all come together. If we need help, we're there. It doesn't matter what department we're on. The building can be rebuilt, trucks can be replaced, but someone gets uh, hurt or killed, you know, I hope I never have to do that. Charred helmets and burnt wood. They lay here now, but not burnt spirits. Rideout says there will be another South Hopkins fire station now the rebuilding begins. In Hopkins County, Tadney Dozier, Eyewitness News. You named a truck after him. Unfortunately, that was one of the ones that was inside, huh? That's correct. In 2009, we got a FEMA grant to, to purchase that tanker. It was a 3,000 gallon tanker and and it wasn't my idea. It was the, the guys on the department and they said, we want to do something to honor him. And they said, we want to name that truck Big Daddy. And, uh, that's what it was. Family away from your family. I see it in your eyes that it's hard right now because that was a piece of your dad, wasn't it? Yeah, very much. Looking at it now, it hurts even more. Yeah, the day it hurts you more. Thanks for joining us today. Good to see you. This is Eyewitness News at noon on Local 7 WTVW. I'm Tadmi Dozier. We want to get right to you at noon. One of the four suspects in the death of a man whose body was found at an Alcoa plant has pled guilty. I look at Lake Michigan in Chicago. Is that toddle in town. <laughs> I was told I could not do an accent, so. It's, yeah, no accent one day I've heard. <laughs> Welcome back to Daybreak on WEHT Local, everybody. Let's take a look around the nation now. A morning swim off California's Manhattan Beach almost cost an L.A. County man his life. Take a look at this. This is cell phone video shot from the Manhattan Beach Pier after a great white shark attacked 40-year-old Stephen Robles Saturday.